I end up collapsing again on the on the court, and um, the doctors were like, "Look, it's you you know you I have a bad heart," and so it, was, it just got to the point where the doctor said, "Like you can't do this anymore." It was uh, so they ended up saying you have to stop playing. When I was in high school, I always wanted a scholarship to play basketball. You know, my, my parents, it's not like mon money wasn't a big, uh, was, was not an easy thing. Um, both of my parents didn't go to college. Um, so it, it wasn't something that we could easily afford. And I figured a scholarship would be the easiest way to do it. And I picked basketball because it's the sport that I really love the most. I got a phone call from a school in Louisiana. And they wanted me to go down there, and I was a Division One school. They said, you know, come down, we have a new coach, we have a new staff, we're interested, we saw your film, we were interested in you as a player. So I went down to Louisiana, drove down there with my father, but he dropped me off, and what I found out is I couldn't enroll in classes. So I ended up getting an apartment with some people that worked at the school that had no furniture in my room. Uh, I worked as a dishwasher at a diner to pay my bills, and I would go to practice, I'd walk three miles to the wash dishes, walk to the practice, watch the practice, go work out on my own, lift, do everything on my own. I thought we're finally gonna stop playing, this is great, this is my dream. And I walked in his office and he said, like, look, you better sit down, the, the, the doctors don't cl wanna clear you, they said you need another surgery. So I had to fly home, and I had to have another surgery, the same pain, same everything. What changed was five and a half hours into it, they killed me in the operating table. Alarms were going off, people were rushing in. I mean, it was, you know, I was on, I was in the operator room for a long time until they could stabilize me. And, uh, you know, they had to go out and tell my parents. And it was really a scary situation because we didn't know what was going to happen. Like, was I going to live? Was I going to die? What we found out is they damaged my heart permanently. I had that goal and dream, so I rebuilt myself. To, again, with push ups, with sit ups, I did all this stuff. I worked with the strength coach in Louisiana. and. And we, we got, I got stronger, I got better, I got quicker. Uh, the coach called me into his office and he pulled my scholarship from me. He said, uh, you know, my heart wouldn't be 100%. He didn't want to waste his scholarship on me, so he pulled it. And then I was stuck without a college or money or anything. Those experiences kind of teach you a little bit about adversity. And, and, and uh, uh, I was able to be, you know, get a scholarship at an assumption. He's truly a medical marvel, staying uh, in two open heart surgeries, and, and now he's a part of the team. And, and more importantly, than as a player, Stephen is a phenomenal leader, and so he brings to the court uh, character, integrity. And uh, when we are rebuilding a program, that's the first thing you have to do. I transferred there and, and had a great career there. I didn't watch a game on television or go into a gym for about three years. Uh, it was just was so painful to have to go through that. So I kind of uh, excluded myself from the sport, which was difficult too, because it's the sport that I really enjoyed and really loved and brought me so much joy, uh, even though I had to go through all that pain. So um, it took a long time uh, for me to be able to um, want to be involved in the sport again. With basketball or as a teacher, to make sure you're grateful. Uh, there's a lot of things that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, people that were around, um, the, the, the ability to see, to hear, to talk. I mean, we have so much given to us and, and that's something that uh, I always want to instill in, in the players and my students is to be very grateful for things and we, we spend a lot of time with that. Uh, the next thing too is, is, is our strength as a human being to create our own destiny. I mean, one of the things that, that we do is we wake up every single day and we get to make decisions. It's, it's us in our decision making. So I never tell people to not dream big, but their dreams and work habits have to, have to be in alignment. You can't dream up here and work down here and expect to reach your dream because ultimately I control that. Um, and that's, that's so key because a lot of times we go around blaming everybody else uh, and that's not really the case. Who your family is and your parents and all that stuff, that's not your fault. But what your life becomes, that's your responsibility. And, and until folks really grasp that concept, what happens is we're caught in this cycle of everybody else is responsible for my existence except me. 
And when I take ownership of what I do, then I'm in control. And once I'm in control, I can make the decisions that lead me to the life I want to live.